So it's really, really nice to see everybody here. And just to just you know, point to the practice that we do, which is qigong. And qi means energy, or life energy, gong to work or cultivate. And of course, what the practice is doing is helping the, the qi flow, hopefully a bit more optimally through our bodies. Uh, but qi is everything. Qi is in your facial complexion, it's in your speech, it's in the kind of chats that you, you, you have going on in the chat box, wishing each other well, sending each other love, saying hello from wherever you are. You know, there's a, there's a type of energy that's communicated and transmitted that is very nourishing. And you know, what we, we do with chi of all kinds is digest and absorb and transform it. Uh, refine it or uh, let it help ground us. And this can be in um, the movements that we do, the foods that we eat, the conversations that we have, the company that we keep. Any experience is an opportunity to um, have an energy exchange, right? And energy is always transferred or moved. It's never lost. That's the second law of thermodynamics, I believe. And um, you know, at the heart of all of our practices, of course, we're talking about energy flow, but it's about nourishment. And it's about like how we create kind of a, a, a balanced, more harmonious, more nourishing experience for ourselves. And nourishment is what all living things crave. You know, not even crave, need you know, to survive, to grow, to thrive. Um, so just as an invitation as you do practice today uh, to use the, an intention, which is not in the mind, I often point to the mind, but actually it, <laughs> the intention in Chinese medicine lives in your spleen. Um, so our, 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 our thinking experience is, is in Chinese medicine governed by um, the spleen, which houses our intention. So we use intention to nourish ourselves, you know, to bring in what is beneficial for uh, replenishment, for uh, building back reserves and allowing the sense of, you know, being able to get through your day, not only sort of um, in a way that you know, maybe mitigate some stress levels or uh, maybe, you know, just slips through to the end of the day, like, oh, I made it through a day, but to actually make it through a day in a way that's um, enlivening, that you appreciate what's happening around you, that you feel like you're awakening a bit more and you're able to take in some of the, um, the, the beauty that the earth offers you, that you're able to meet the difficulty and the tensions and the conflicts that inevitably and invariably color your relationships and your life to meet them in a way that, that, that don't make you feel crippled or um, uh, more agitated, but you're, you're able to allow them to arise and meet them with the sense of um, you know, understanding, compassion, insight, uh, wisdom, and, and move through your day learning from experience. You know, that's also growth, how we learn. So your intention today from your spleen is to nourish yourself through these practices so that your life can be fuller, richer, um, more dimensional, and that we don't maybe fall into some of the, the tendencies that are natural, that, you know, but they don't overtake us to push away the things that we don't like or contract and uh, withdraw from the things, keep them away that we don't like. Um, and that we can open to you know, the complexities and sometimes messy experiences of life, as well as really make room for that which is beautiful and um, intimate, connecting, um, invigorating and enlivening. All right, so on that note, let's come up to stand. Um, I know that a few of you mentioned you're here for the first time. And to give you a, a, 
an overview. We start with me talking a, a little bit, hopefully not too long. <laughs> and then part one is sort of intention setting and opening, which is what we'll start with. There's five parts to class. So part one is just settling in, bring your hands resting onto uh, the lower dantian, feet about shoulders distance wide and turn straight. And then part two is some joint releases, um, meridian massage, kind of a warm up. Part three, we'll do some standing meditation. Part four, we'll do the main forms, which these few weeks will be the five element forms. And then part five is a closing. So in part one here, just taking a moment to settle into the body, letting the feet feel like they're rooted into the earth, the toes spread. Some of you I see you're outside and it's wonderful to do Qigong outside. And if I were outside and I wasn't on grass, I would be wearing shoes. So Qigong is definitely something you can do wearing shoes or barefoot. But in either case, whether you're shoed or unshoed, spread the toes, you know, feel the earth. And then notice the, the hands where they're resting on the belly and whether or not some breath can make its way all the way down there as you breathe in. And likewise, soften out of that area as you breathe out. And probably the most fundamental source of chi comes from our breath. In fact, in Chinese, the word for inhale is qi qi, which means to take in life energy, qi. And the word for exhale is uh, hu qi or tu qi, which means to move the life energy out. So it's in the fabric of breath and and, and the foundation and nourishment of the body to breathe. And taking in life energy, chi, breathing out and expelling chi that is toxic for the body, which is you know, why it's so important to breathe out fully. And then with that steady breath, release the arms and turn the palms out to the side. And the power of intention is that it moves and directs the chi. So with your hands, what you'll be doing is gathering. Your breath here is natural and deep. And the invitation with your intention is to gather what doesn't feel nourishing, what is depleting, what is toxic. The hands will float out to the side as you gather what it causes fatigue or tension, confusion, any of those things that deplete rather than nourish the life energy. And then the middle fingers will point towards each other, the palms will turn towards the earth and use your hands to clear and let go of some of these things that deplete that cause confusion, tiredness, fatigue, tightness. Take your time to let the hands float down and clear. And now the movement is exactly the same, but change your intention to gather that which nourishes and feeds you know, good chi to the body spaciousness, ease, healthy flow, clarity, and fill into the space you just cleared. Fill with what nourishes you. Middle fingers point towards each other as you fill. 
And now the third final round is the same movement. The intention is to gather what you just filled. Whatever nourishes and feeds you know, good balanced chi in your body. And seal this in. Sealing it in means that it lasts longer. You seal in food when you put it in the refrigerator. You seal an envelope before you mail it. Sealing this in. Good. And then shift your weight over onto the left leg and foot. I'll mirror you for a lot of these movements because you've just been standing for a little while. Circle the right heel a few times, one direction. And as you do any movement, invite the breath to be natural. Low in the lower dantian, smooth rather than choppy. And then reverse and circle your heel the other way. So it's just massages and open some of the uh, joint spaces of the lower body. And then we'll shift and change, shifting the weight onto the right leg and doing the same with the left heel. Circling. Five or six rounds, one way, and then change direction, please. Good. And let the feet come back to about shoulders distance wide. This is a, a new um, pattern or form that I haven't taught with the, the classes. So follow along and I'll try to explain it as clearly as I can. It's not that complicated. Your hands and palms face the earth, a little bit in front of the hips. Yeah. Or if you want, you can bend your knees more and lower the hands a little bit more, but you don't wanna be folding over so much like that. Do it to a place that's comfortable for your knees. And as the hands move to the left, circle your knees to the right. So the knees are gonna make circles and your hands will make circles. And basically the knees and hands circle in opposite directions. You're just circling the joint spaces of the knees. I think from the side is helpful to watch, but if I were to you know, show you going forward, it's like this, yeah. And then move the hands a little bit higher towards the hip area, straighten your legs a little bit and circle your hips, focusing not on the knees anymore, but around your hips. So circular patterns are really beneficial for your bones and your joints. They're not easy per se to feel for a lot of us because our world is a bit more linear and straight, but circles are spirals and spheres and um, things like that are, are very natural in the world. And, as we're in an earth season right now, you know, circles, transitions into autumn is also governed by earth. We can really benefit from focusing on smooth transitions and circular patterns. Now you're gonna come higher up to the rib cage and just same movement, but focus on the rib cage moving and turning. rather than the hips and the knees. So you're really focused a little bit more on the ribs. Yeah. So imagine now with your intention that the transitions, the movements are fluid and steady like the earth as it turns. And now we're gonna stay high up at the ribs 
but reverse the way that you're circling. You're going to circle the opposite direction that you were just going with the ribs and the hands. Stay steady in your breathing. Go at whatever pace feels right for you. It might be slower, faster, the same as the rhythm and pace that I'm going at. Doesn't matter what I'm doing so much, more valuable for you to do what feels like it's nourishing and replenishing and easeful for you. Good. And then we're going to move down to the hips as the focus. The hands can go a little bit lower. And rather than focus on the ribs, let your energy and your intention be in the movement of the hips circling. Good, yeah, really nice. As you're doing this, pay attention to the hands and see whether they can be very soft and relaxed. Very at ease. And if they're not at ease, that's okay. If they feel tense, if they feel uh, cold, if they feel rigid, it's okay. Just noticing and inviting there to be a little ease. And then the knees. Focusing on circling the knees. So we've let most of the joints of the body you know, be lubricated, hydrated, moisturized, which is very, very, very nourishing for the joints. And then slow this down. Make your way to stand and observe as you stand, just the feeling present in your body, your relationship between the feet on the earth and the crown of the head to the sky and what's in between that. I feel a little bit of sensations around my hands and I also feel like there's this <laughs> <laughs> spiral movement still happening, even though I've stood still. Yeah. Good. So we're going to lightly work the meridian line of the spleen like we did last week. And the fingers just, as you fold forward, the fingers just touch towards the um, second toe, I think. I'm just gonna make second toe, yeah. And then slide your hands, actually big toe, sorry, big toe, and then slide your hands along the inner edge of the foot to the ankle, up the inner shins to the inner knees, and then along slightly inside of the thighs, but not along like the pants seams, all the way up to your groins. Just let your fingers travel up that way. And then up the centers of both sides of your chest to your collarbones. Yeah. And this is the spleen meridian pathway. And then divert down right underside the armpit. That's where the spleen meridian ends. So you're just going to do that a couple of times again. Fold forward, use your fingers along the big toes, and then slide up the inner arch up the inner ankle and inner shins to the inner knees, and then slightly inside of center, not all the way at the pant seams, all the way to the groins, up the center chest, up to the collarbones, and then out and down to the sides of the armpits. And then one more time. So the spleen is the main yin meridian of the earth element up the inner legs, up the inner knees, just kind of feeling that up the centers of the chest to the collarbones and then over and down towards the armpit area. 
And it pairs with an organ called the stomach. And the stomach meridian starts right underneath the eyes. So I'm showing you close, but just lightly with your fingertips, tap under the eyes. And then tap down to the corner of the mouth. Yeah. And then over to the jaw, outer jaw, up the sides of the ear, all the way up towards the hairline of the scalp. And then the stomach meridian jumps down to the neck, side of the neck, and then down along the center of the chest past the nipple line. Keep lightly tapping to the groins make little fists, and then it's the centers of the thighs that you use the fists to tap down lightly. Pass the knees to the outer shins, all the way to the tops of the feet and ending at the second toe. So that's a long meridian line, stand up, and we'll do that again. So tapping the undersides of the eyes, Swaking up the meridian for the stomach and then down to the outer corners of the mouth, over towards the outer jaw, up the sides of the ears to the top scalp line. And then again, the stomach meridian jumps down to the sides of the neck and then down all the way to the centers of the chest past the nipple line. And then make little fists once you get to the groins and tap the outer thighs, center outer thighs, right outside the shin bone, to the tops of the ankles and feet, and to the second toe. And then stand, we'll do that one more time, lightly tapping underneath the eyes. It's very beneficial just to stimulate some flow in the meridian channel down to the outer mouth, lips to the outer jaw, up the sides of the face to the upper scalp, and then down to sides of the neck, all the way down centers of the chest, little fists tapping down, the center thighs, outer shins, tops of the feet, and the second toe. And then again, stand and take a moment observing how the sensation is all the way from the head to the toes. The nice thing, the side effect of uh, meridian work is that it awakens a more embodied presence. Kind of welcome in from head to toe, all of the different parts here. So adjust your feet now. Do a minute of a light shake. This is wild horse shaking. Keep the heels on the ground. Relax the arms and hands. Focusing on the center, rising up and down. Take a few breaths out through your mouth. And particularly for those of you who haven't done very much standing meditation before, this is a really um, beneficial and helpful way to get into it because in a moment when you stop, the arms will most likely be in position for wuji, which is emptiness dance for standing meditation. So now stop. And typically there's just a little gap between the arm and the sides of the hips and waist. Add kind of an acorn sized pocket underneath your armpits. Yeah. Let the fingers extend like they're a little thirsty for water beneath the earth. So the fingers don't curl in so much, but there's a bit of length through them. 
The main thing is relaxing any tension through the body, the whole body relaxes. And it's very detailed if you stand for long periods of time, but we'll just stand for a few minutes. And as you stand, let the front body, the front channel, Rin Mai, soften and relax. The knees are a little more bent than straight. The belly, the lower Dantian, relaxed, breathing into and out of the lower abdomen as much as feels natural for you. The teeth are closed without clenching them. And rest the tongue just naturally, lightly behind the teeth. This closes and connects two important yin and yang meridian pathways. The crown of the head rise toward the sky, the tailbone draw down towards the earth. This is an energy practice. And it builds strength in the legs and energy flow through the body. And especially when done longer periods of time, it's an invitation to start meeting whatever is coming up in your experience. Mind might get irritated or impatient. Body might feel a little bit impatient, but then the invitation is to relax around that. So it's a training stance of emptiness, wuji, space of potential before the movement of yin and yang or tai chi. Wuji also philosophically is the vast undifferentiated state of potential. Empty as in the empty room so people can come in. Not deficient or lacking, but empty as in opportunity. empty cup that can be filled with a nice drink. And so you got just another minute or so, and it, really the invitation is stay with what's here. Even if you want to move, stay with what's here. Weight is a little forward to the balls of the feet, knees and joint spaces relaxed. Inner smile can help soften things. And it's nourishing for the body to build some resilience. It's nourishing for the mind to, to have space to witness experience, to respond rather than react. And then slowly invite the hands to come one over the other back to the lower dantian. And draw the hands and arms behind the back body, hold one wrist with the other hand, and then circle on the feet, massaging the bottoms of the feet after standing for about five minutes. And reverse. So I know some of you um, have done standing meditation for a while, and some of you may be new to it. It's the foundation of Qigong. And as the foundational practice, uh, it's important to do. <laughs> but it's also, paradoxically, the most difficult practice. So I noticed some of you very still, and I also noticed some of you 
you know, moving your feet, getting a bit restless. And that is so natural, so normal, because most of us don't like to stand still or have never really been told it's a good thing to do and to practice. Um, so, you know, being aware that agitation, restlessness, discomfort, really normal. And the opportunity to meet that and over time, you know, gain some discernment around that and ways that you can gradually meet what's here, relax and enter into stillness in the standing meditation bit by bit. All right, so we are gonna start our forms, the five element practices. We did these last week. Uh, so they may be new to you if you haven't been here, they may be practices you've done. Um, they tend to repeat or they all repeat. So week by week, I'll be introducing nuances and, and, and little things that you might um, focus on. But on the whole, if you come week to week, we'll repeat them and you'll get to know them. So the hands will start resting on the lower Dantian, feet together. Just taking a moment to invite this idea of your elemental constitution uh, to be nourished. And then step the left foot out, release the arms. And we're gonna start with the wood element. The fingers trace along part of the liver meridian line and that is along the inner thighs, come up to right beneath the ribs. And then you press the heels of the hands in as you exhale and bend the knees. Then lift the arms forward as you breathe in. Step the left foot back to center as you breathe out. That repeats on the second side. You step out and you draw along the inner thighs with your fingers and hands. You breathe out, bend the knees, and press the heels of the hands in and down. That's part of the liver meridian. Then you float the arms forwards, and you breathe out the feet back together. Now, when you, when you step out, try not to fold forward, like I mentioned if you were here last week, but keep the crown of the head lifted and the tailbone descended, and then exhale and down. Arms forward, breathing in and then arms back in as you breathe out. Now stepping out, not too far. And then again, crown of the head up, tailbone down, lifting up through to right underside the ribs. And how much you press isn't um, that important. It's more just a comfortable pressing in, the arms forward and then back out. And continue stepping out and breathing in. Breathing out, pressing down. So the liver relates to the wood element. Inhale forward and exhale back in. Wood element's about clear vision. Keep going. Clear vision, uh, dreams and plans and the ability to act on them. Breathing out. It's seasonal correspondence is the spring when nature has all kinds of big plans, right? The seed can start to uh, germinate and the plan for the tree is all in the seed. But whether or not that tree will grow and the plans will come to fruition has a lot to do with whether there's enough water, whether there's been enough nourishment over the winter. And exhaling down, when we're working with wood element, there's also the sense of that rootedness and groundedness. So with your intention to nourish the feet, the roots, let the legs really feel the strength, like the roots of a tree, exhale down. And the arms forward, almost like the uh, branches and leaves beginning to grow. And we'll do a couple more rounds. Just really finding that rooted nourishment and strength through your legs, breathing out, and any growth in the upper body predicated on the roots 
of the legs being strong, the center moving the body. So a couple more rounds where really feeling whether it's possible to let your feet invite the arms to move from the feet, to let the feet be the strength for the movement. Last time, the legs be the strength for the growth. The nourishment from the strength of the legs. Good, nice, yeah, forward and down. Good, and then step the feet apart and we'll gather these qualities of the wood element, clear plans, visions, dreams, predicated on that nourishment of water, the nourishment of deeply nourished and um, strong roots. Fill with that possibility. To let any dream, any plan come to fruition. Giving it a steady foundation from which to grow and mature. And rest your hands back onto the lower Dantian and take a full round of breath here at the lower Dantian. Remember, always connecting to this source of life energy, the breath. Next in the creation cycle, wood burns, helps fire burn. Spring moves into summer. So we start with the fire element now, the feet are together. The left foot steps out. And this time the pinkies join together. You inhale the arms all the way on the back a little. You can see all the way overhead. And then as you breathe out, the head stays up, the knees bend and the backs of the hands slide together as you move down. Then the arms move out to the sides like a mushroom. And then the left foot steps to center, breathing out to finish. Same thing, other side, you step the right foot out and your inner pinkies or outer pinkies rather come together. You scoop up light towards the sun and you exhale the, that down to pour through the center of the body. As you breathe in, the arms parallel out. And as you breathe out, the right foot steps back to the left. Like that, you're gonna continue. I'll guide you through another couple rounds. The inner or the pinkies join together. Then the fingers point to the earth as the backs, the hands join and your knees bend. Open your arms, breathing in. And step the foot back and breathing out. Not stepping out too far, but just enough to uh, feel comfortable. And then light touch with the backs of the hands. So not pressing too much, knees bent, opening as you breathe in, and then closing as you breathe out. So continue like this. Fire element matures the growth of spring, exhaling down. Fire is an element that uh, is about kind of showing our true colors to the world, you know, feeling more comfortable in our skin, um, maximum yang, kind of you know, creating and fostering uh, a bloom and a maturity, a ripening of who we are. And it's like the, the deep kind of summer, you know, height of summer, and if you see kind of the trees are their verdant green, and flowers and roses really fully in bloom. And it's a time in our lives where we can you know, kind of feel the plans of spring coming in to bear some um, benefit in our lives. Like we can maybe if, you know, things have gone okay, then we, we have a community, we have uh, support, we have, uh, maybe a family or uh, whether that be blood family or kin or friends, we have maybe a partner, we have a dog, you know, we've got people that we love, hopefully, 
And if not, then, you know, fire can still express itself as connection, as community, as a sense of warmth. And, you know, sometimes, uh, of course, fire element and love and connection feel hard, especially we've all been through a pandemic, right? And so fire can go out, fire can feel challenged. We, all of us, every human being has been brokenhearted. Every human being has lost someone they love and felt pain in their heart. But the, the heart is so important, it's got lots of help. And this practice, as you gather, you know, gather, what supports this ability for the heart and fire in your body to feel like it can, despite the difficulties of life, that it can have that warmth, that even after heartbreak, it can you know, feel connection and um, community. And it can have that capacity to be a little flame that invites a light into your body and into maybe those around you as a source of um, brightness. So gathering up towards the sun that source of light, that warmth, to help you feel this fruition and maturity of spring. And it doesn't have to just be in your life, in terms of life cycles, it can be in a day, right? in the maturity of a day, the maturity of an idea. All of these things we can explore as ways that fire matures and ripens. One more time each side and just use your intention to nourish the fire element so that the heart can feel that support, connection, love, warmth. Last time to the right, breathing in, drawing the hands up to gather that fire of the sun, breathing out, Letting it fill the body, opening the arms, and then finishing arms down, foot in. You step the feet a little wider again, and you gather this quality of the element of fire, sunlight, warmth. Don't want it to burn so bright, it burns you out. Don't want it to go out so that it's barely a flicker, but just a nice steady warmth, filling that into the form of your body as the hands come down. Maturing, that ripening, as your hands come to rest here, just getting a sense for how that translates into a felt experience for you. So fire burns down into earth and earth is the season of late summer, but also this transitional time in between seasons that stabilizes the mercurial times of transition that the challenges like Chris, who's in Colorado was saying one day it's like in, in the eighties and the next day it's in the thirties, you know, spring to to uh, winter to spring is also a difficult transition. And I guess sometimes uh, summer to autumn as well in Colorado can be unpredictable. So earth steadies that transition. And earth is a bit trickier. So follow along or um, I'll try to explain as best I can. The left foot steps out and the two arms inhale or up towards the sky. Then as you breathe out, the bottom palm turns to the earth and the top palm turns to the sky. You rotate through that movement. You take a breath in, 
Then your top hand floats to touch the earth as you breathe out. Both arms, when you stand up, open to the two sides. And then left foot steps back in as the arms release back down. The right foot steps out and your two hands move up to the sky. Top hand palm stays to the sky, bottom hand palm to the earth as you turn, exhale. Take a breath in at the end of your turn and then top hand lowers to the ground, breath out. Both arms inhale to the sides as you stand. Both arms lower as the right foot steps back in. Continue, left foot steps out and you're lifting both hands toward the sky. Top hand to the sky like you're holding a platter and serving. Bottom hand to the earth, turning around, breath in. Then top arm lowers as you breathe out, touch the earth. The two arms open, breathing in. Standing, breathing out, stepping back in. Then to the right, breath in. So earth turns on its axis daily and yearly. Breath out around the sun, it turns on its own axis. Breathe out, touch that stable earth that moves at a thousand miles per hour. Breathe in, stand up, breathe out, step together. And it's going fast, but it's so steady that we here, conscious people, can't feel the turning of the earth. Exhale and rotate, take a breath in. Out breath, lower the top hand down. In breath, both arms out, stand up. Out breath, back in. So stability is the quality uh, governed by earth. And it's sort of this, Ease of experience, turning. Earth supports all the other elements. Top hand down, both arms out. Breath in, stand. And together. But because it supports all the other elements, it's easily overwhelmed and overburdened. Exhale, turn. Take a breath in. And exhale, fold, top hand to the earth. Arms open, in breath. And feet stuck together, out breath. So the best thing to not get overwhelmed for earth, inhaling up, is to stay grounded, steady, turn. And to let the intention, the mind, not get over analytical, worried, overthinking, exhale. So things that focus the mind, inhale, lift up, like movement, like embodiment, like meditation, exhale, round. Take a breath in and exhale down. Lift up, breathe in, step together, breathe up. So right foot out, some of you are losing it a little bit, so come back to just the form, turn as you exhale. Take a breath in, top arm lowers to the ground, breathe out. Then both arms open as you breathe in and stand. Good. Breath out, right foot in. Keep going, left foot in breath, rise. So balancing opposing forces is a quality of earth. Yeah. And if we're able to kind of, you know, meet our different responsibilities and not feel overwhelmed, then Earth does a great job. And we can kind of support all those in our lives who need our uh, sympathy and support and understanding. Exhale around. So it's about taking care of and nourishing our Earth element. Exhale down. So when you fold down and touch the earth, just connect to that groundedness. When you lift up, finding the feet on the earth, the arms to the sky, this is this place on earth. As you turn, tap into the steadiness of transition, the smoothness uh, and ease of transition. And then the home of earth, just that ground and steady belonging that can help you feel less burdened and more capable 
of sort of meeting the different roles and responsibilities you have. Stepping out, that steady transition. Feel if you can embody that breath in. And then honoring the earth, that light touching of the ground. In breath, stand up. Out, breath back in. Good, last two. Inhalation, rise. Exhalation, focusing on that smooth transition. Take a breath in. And the respect and care you can give to the earth. And then it gives back to you in turn to help you feel that ease and ability to support others. And it over time creates a sense of, of um, abundance. Late summer, there's lots of fruit. There's that enjoyment of life, that ease in life. And finishing with the arms and the feet back together. And step the feet apart. And gather just this ability to you know, meet transitions with greater ease and grace. And also work with the different roles and responsibilities that you have and you know, feel steady in that. Filling with that possibility and that opportunity that earth can offer us. Place the hands again back onto the lower dantian. And see how it is. How do you transition from place to place, from one job to another, from one lockdown into another, from, you know, just all the different things that we've had to meet or that you've had to meet? And how can you draw on earth as support, as nourishment? And then earth yields the precious gemstones and metals and rocks that are the metal element. Um, you know, there's uh, rubies, diamonds, sapphires, emeralds, topaz, precious metals of the earth, uh, gold, platinum, silver, titanium, and then also just the rocks around us that manifest as metal. Metal is autumn. It's a time of sharpness, of clear discernment, of cutting away, of letting go, but also of inspiration and taking in of you know, what is really important and valuable in our lives. Remembering that, being grateful for that, honoring that, and then letting things go that no longer serve us. So you know, if leaves never fell off of trees, there'd be no room for new leaves to grow. If we didn't uh, go to the bathroom semi-regularly or regularly, no new food could come in. We wouldn't be able to digest it and eliminate and take in new things. So, you know, it's a tricky process to let go sometimes, especially in our society, which is really materialistic and consumptive. And it's about uh, more and um, ag um, aggregating uh, and commodifying more and more. So the ability to not want more, but to actually let go you know, is something that may take some contemplation and, um, and, and support you know, to help nourish this aspect. So metal as the practice is quite simple. The left foot steps out and you gather the hands. You bring the hands back behind the chest and ribs and then bending the knees, you press the hands forward, breathing out. Then straighten the legs and retract the hands in. Step the left foot back in and lower the hands down. That repeats on the other side. The right foot steps out and you inhale and gather. You exhale from behind the ribs, press, bending the knees. Inhale and retract the arms, hands back in. 
And as you step in, you lower the hands back down. So like that, we'll continue inhaling and gathering. So exhale from the lungs. The lungs are the main yin meridian of metal. Inhaling back in. Now, as you step the foot in, you exhale and the large intestine colon is the parent organ of metal. It's about letting go. Hopefully, <laughs> inhale and rise up. And you gather what really feels like the qualities of metal, which shows you know, inspiration, value, gratitude. And then you let go of the things that you know kind of burden you, don't serve you, are ready to be uh, released. So just focus on that as your intention. You know, this movement forward is good, healthy defenses so that what's valuable is protected. Yeah. Not necessarily pushing away, but you know, being strong and courageous. What is of value to you? You want to treasure, you want to maintain a healthy protection and boundary around some of that. And then letting go. Continue. Metal inspiration. You know, this quality of appreciation, really appreciating and delighting in what you value and treasure. It's the quality of metal. Also doing things in a way that isn't very crass, but really kind of um, uh, thought out, careful, uh, precise. Yeah. And breathing in, you gather. Breathing out, you press. Breathing in, you retract in. And breathing out, you let go, consolidate, solidify, release. Breathing in. And some of you, you're pressing your hands a little bit close together. Keep them about as wide as your shoulders. Inhaling in and exhaling down. And also when you gather, not to lift the arms too high, about the level of the chest. And then it's not the hands that tense and press, but can you press from your center? So the hands are actually quite soft and relaxed. And exhaling in. And soft hands gathering. And even as you press forward, see if the hands can stay relaxed so that your defenses aren't sharp. Your defenses are strong from center. Back in. And then one more time each side, metal element, autumn, that time in nature of appreciation, gratitude, right? We have lots of um, celebrations that commemorate the harvest and the appreciation of um, availability of food, if there is. And we're so lucky in the age that we live in for the most part. You know, many of us in the West have access to good food. And we celebrate that in the harvest season. Exhale and release. And then step the feet apart, gathering it's these qualities of what are valuable and important things in your life, things you treasure, things you appreciate, and the ability to you know, really feel a connection to that appreciation at the same time, cutting away and letting go of that which doesn't serve you. Beautiful qualities of the metal element. Press the hands back onto the lower dantian. Take a full breath. And the lungs that can transform this breath into nourishment as it moves through the bloodstream. Can rid the body as we breathe out of carbon dioxide that is no longer needed by the bloodstream and the body. And 
And then feet come together, metal, the rocks of the earth, um, they produce vapor uh, from eons ago, like gas would come out, vapor would come out from rocks as water molecules. And, and this is how metal produces water in the creative cycle. And then it's the related season of winter. So this one, winter about inner stillness. So the intention, even as you move, there's inner stillness and inner strength. The arms reach back and up. The hips, they move forwards. As your arms rise up, then the hips shift back and you fold, bending through the knees. Then along the backs of your legs, I'll turn my back to you so you can see, along the backs of your legs, let the arms come all the way up. And then a little tap as you breathe out, little fists. Open your fists at the kidneys, breathing in and slide the hands all the way back down the backs of the legs as you breathe up. Then the inner legs come up all the way towards the groins and uh, torso, and then release and step the left foot back to the right as you finish. And we'll do the other side. The right foot steps out and your hips move forward a bit as the arms move back, all the way up breathing in. Fold forward as you breathe out. Along the backs of the legs, inhale, hands climbing up. Little tap with fists as you exhale to the kidneys. Open your hands, breathing in, and then slide back down as you exhale. Let the hands come inside the legs as you inhale and ascend. And then right foot steps to the left as you breathe out. Left foot out, hips forward, knees bend, arms reach back and overhead. Arms fold forward as you breathe out, hands behind the ankles. Inhale, rise up the backs of the legs with your hands along the skin. Make fists and exhale, tap. Open the fists, inhale, palms on the kidneys. Exhale and travel down. Inhale along the inner legs. And then exhale back to center, arms down. So the arms, inhale back as the hips go forward, overhead. And as you fold, bend the knees, the water organs, the urinary bladder, the hands moving up the backs of the legs moves along part of your urinary bladder meridian. And then light tap of fists to the kidneys. Inhale, open the hands. And exhale, la, uh, uh, lower down, sliding the hands. Along the inner ankles, this is part of your kidney meridian system, paired with the urinary bladder. And exhale, back in. So kidneys and urinary bladder are the main water organs, or the or water organs. And fold. Along the backs of the legs, inhale, Slide up, little fists, exhale, tap. Open, palms, inhale, out breath, slide down. Come in along the inner legs as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, foot steps back in. Continue, movement stays the same, you're gonna open. And water in winter, water is reflective, it's um, powerful, it's soft in its power. You can't punch water, you can't grab and hold water. Exhale, little punch. And yet it's so strong, right? It carves canyons and it wears down metal and stone to fine particles of sand. Inhale, rise up the inner legs. Exhale, back in. And its soft strength means that it has this depth and power often associated with wisdom, listening, quietness, stillness, insight and wisdom, breathing in. Exhale, open the hands in breath. 
down the backs of the legs, out breath. So as you continue tapping into an inner stillness, a sense of wisdom, a quality of inner strength, and it's that soft strength. You put your back into something, your back bending a little bit, cultivating that power and soft strength, fluidity in movements. Exhale. In breath open. Exhale down. Along the inner legs, breath in. Back in, breath out. How can you move, but inwardly find stillness? Within movement, seek stillness. And can that be a source of strength for you? That ability to listen, be still inwardly, helps us discern more, but also go deeper when we're quiet. We tend to um, be less distracted. We can pay closer attention. We can let the noise of other activities fade. The discord or dissonance of life fades. We can cultivate some understanding. The archetype of water is the philosopher who follows things to the deepest places to know them beyond just the surface. So one more time each side, breathing in. Inner stillness, inner strength, quietness and listening. Breathe in, down as you fold along the backs of the legs. Inner legs coming up, kidney meridian. Connects us to our drive, our purpose, our will. Volition, last time open, fold, up the backs of the legs, breathing in, light tap, breathing out, breath in, and down. And as you come up, letting what nourishes the water element for you, Nourishes this inner quietness and strength. Exhaling back in the center. Step the feet apart and gathering the quality of water, the way in which it can support and feed and help. Provide the foundations for stillness, nourishment of silence, and inner strength. And rest your hands on the lower Dantian, observing how that feels. And at the end of the five element practices, we do a closing form, which is the feet together. And it's just a balancing form for all of the movements, more symmetrical. And the knees bend as the arms rise out, breathing in. The knees straighten as the arms float down, breathing out. Similar to a crane position, it's just a symmetrical shape. Do it five times in total. Cultivating that transitional ease and fluidity of movement. All five elements nourishing the body, 
home to energy and chi. One more round. Step the feet apart. We'll take a moment as we did last week in the earth element mudra. So as the hands come towards each other, your left hand will rise up level of the chest. I'll mirror you the right palm beneath the left. There's a little gap so my hands aren't touching the torso. Knees are soft. The stability of earth in this transitional time. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you're moving into spring. In the northern hemisphere, we're moving into autumn. Also the end of late summer. Make sure the bottom hand elbow isn't too bent, that the hand is fairly low beneath the lower belly button. Stable, easeful, balanced. The clear intentions. Able to balance opposing forces. Then the arms, hands come apart and they switch as the right palm comes at center and the left below. like a half prayer and then anything that that prayer asks for and that slips off the hand, it can be held in, in the bowl of the bottom hand. It's also sometimes referred to as power of the immeasurable gods, this hand gesture, or shoyin in Chinese. It's nourishing your earth's st stability and steadiness. And then release. Let the arms come down. The closing form for peaceful chi. For the nourishment as the theme today. The benefits of letting these elemental constitutions of the body, which are reflected in the natural world, be fed, supported, and nourished and fill with peaceful chi that this can engender, this nourishment. How can that bring a sense of peace into the form of the body? And then rest the hands back onto the lower dantian. As we finish with our free bows, you're welcome to change the view to gallery view and just see everybody who's here. And then the first of the three bows, you make a fist with your dominant hand, you fold the other hand over that fist. The first of three bows is to each other for sharing chi energy <laughs> across the, the broad band of many continents. And then the second bow is to your teachers, past, present, and future. And the third and final bow is to yourself. When you bow to yourself, you bow to those who've given you your life, your parents, your grandparents, your ancestors, all those who've come before you maybe as far back as to the source that is one. Well, thank you very, very much for being here today. Really great to have some of you who are new here as well. And yeah, I just appreciate the, also just the presence. And can I just say how um, I, much I appreciate your Donna. Um, the trust, the reciprocity, the mutual support, whatever I can do to support you, um, I'm here to do. And I really appreciate the support that you've offered to me, many of you. And thank you.